Right then, we welcome to the second in a pre-season series sessions, Eve Jones. Eve, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Uh, we noted that there is a cold there, so your voice is a little different to usual. <laughs> Just a little bit, yeah. I'll try my best. Okay. So in, in terms of pre-season uh, preparations, um, what is it that you're focusing on at the moment when you're quite close to the beginning of the season? What do you kind of um, tailor your efforts to at this stage? Um, well, my pre-season has been a bit different this year but because I've been away playing cricket all winter in Oz. But um, usually it's, it's about trying to face bowlers and start to put, play some like scenario sort of games and um, go away from trying to um bat on ball machines and try and face sidearm or bowlers and try and make it a bit more realistic to to what we're about to face in the pre-season and going into the season so I think it's trying to make it a bit more um game-like um so thinking about the tactics and um yeah as I said the scenario sort of work that we do okay and connected with that whether this be in your training or in games, what routines do you have for batting, whether that be in preparing for the game or when you're out in the middle? Is there anything that you keep coming back to to try and get yourself in a in a steady sort of mindset? I think um, trying to keep things consistent as possible. I think for me, I try and keep it as simple as I can um, and try and have the same routines that I would have when I go into training before I go out to bat in the training session as I would when I go out to bat in a game so for me I think it keep it quite simple I, I like to just have some underarm throws just trying to feel the ball in the middle of the bat um, and then that that usually is enough for me um, before a game as well just to just to prepare myself ready for for what's about to come so I don't I don't usually face too many bowlers or um, sidearm or anything before a game um I usually just like to have underarm throws and um think about more think about what what balls I'm about to face so try and mentally prepare more than do too much physically I like to keep nice and fresh for the for my innings when I actually get out to the crease okay and when you're at the crease between balls is there anything that you you do specifically to try and give yourself a bit of a switch off um not too much I don't think I don't think consciously I do too much um it's not something I think too much about I just try to switch off as much as possible and whatever's happened the previous ball whether it's good or bad I try and just make sure I draw a line under that and think about what's what's going to happen next um and I just like to be nice and clear of my mind of what the bowler's plan is and what the field set is and um, what my best options are. Um, so I try and just just keep it nice and simple and just be nice and clear on, on what I'm trying to do, really. Okay. So with that, is that really based on what that your plan for the innings is as it either before you've gone out or as it evolves during the match itself? Yeah, possibly a bit of both. I think, um, especially in the regional stuff that we, the regional cricket we play at the moment, I think we've come across a lot of the bowlers before, like, numerous times so before the game I would I would think about the which bowlers I'm going to come up against later that day um so I try and think about what my my best options are what they're trying to do um and then obviously you're going to have to adapt once you get to the crease because the conditions might be a bit different the pitch might be a bit different um so I think it's yeah I think obviously you have a general idea of what they're trying to do but um yeah I think you've got to obviously be able to adapt once you get out there and um, assess conditions and then go from there really. Mm -hmm. And I get the feeling that you're probably quite a calm person in like how you approach things. How do you manage to keep like that when there is a particularly hostile spell of bowling or a really difficult set of match conditions? Um, yeah, I think I'm quite a calm person anyway. Um, and I try and stay as calm as I can, um, whether I'm batting or in the field, I think obviously being captain of Sparks, I've got to make sure that I'm staying nice and calm to keep the rest of the team calm as well. Um, but yeah, I feel that comes quite naturally to me as I'm quite a calm person anyway. But um, yeah, there's always going to be situations where you're going to be under the pump or 
um, things aren't quite going your way. So I think it's just trying to make sure you switch off, whether it's walking away from, from the crease towards square leg or um, undoing your gloves, re resetting them and, or whatever it might be, everyone's a bit different. Um, but I might just, I might just undo my gloves. That's probably what I try and do just to switch off and then start again and, and reset myself if things aren't going quite as to plan. Okie dokie. Last summer had such a big shift with the 100 coming in and the spotlight on both of the tournaments was unlike anything we've had really with the coverage on terrestrial TV as well as Sky, it reaching new audiences, uh, lots of people being given the opportunity to put themselves in that, that limelight. So what for you were the challenges of playing in that new format, uh, I suppose a bit of the fact it was a new format, slightly different to how um, yeah. games would be before, but also the pressures or the demands that were around that. Yeah, I think the, the new format was quite a challenge the first couple of games. I, I remember being in the field and um, obviously you're, you've got a time limit to, to get through the through the balls, not the overs. Um, and I remember we were a bit under the pump the first game and we ended up having to have an extra fielder in the ring for the last five or ten balls. I'm not quite sure how many now, but um, I remember that was quite a challenge to start with. Obviously, we're a new team as well, and um, we hadn't really played together that much before. Uh, we played a couple of warm-up games, but once we got out there, and obviously um, you've got all the cameras there, you've got the crowd there, it makes it um, that bit more bit more intense. Um, so I remember that was a, that was a little bit of a challenge to start with, but um, we soon managed to, to turn it around and got used to the format and the time and um, where we were meant to be fielding for each bowler because obviously the, you could have a change of bowler after five balls and it could go from a spinner to a seamer so you're going to have a completely different field set so um, yeah we soon got used to it. Um, obviously there's more spotlight on the on the game that we were playing on BBC and Sky um, so obviously a bigger audience so um, obviously going to get critiqued a lot more, um, which is part of it. And um, that can be positive and negative. I think um, it was really good to see that um, the amount of people actually come out and supported us. So there was them, those, those pressures as well, but um, I think it was really successful and it was really good to see the amount of young families come out and watch us and, and really enjoy the day and support us and not just the men. I think um, as the tournament went on, we were getting bigger and bigger crowds um, to our games as well, which was really pleasing to see. Um, so yeah, and obviously you're going to have more press coverage and um, more um, more content on social media as well. So um, I've seen like firsthand that uh, there are a few keyboard warriors out there, which is um, not nice to see, but I, I understand that everyone's got their opinions and, um, I think it's just try not to read too much into that. If you if you see things that are negative and um, not really helpful, I think it's just trying to, to put that to, to one side and, and focus on the positives, really. It sounds like your approach to it has been that you've seen the new format and all that's come with it as more of a challenge than a pressure. Would that be fair? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, as I said, the first, the first couple of games was a bit of a blur. Um, it was all very new and um, very different. And I think once we overcome that challenge, we, we thoroughly enjoyed the whole competition. Um, and yeah, I feel like I cope with the pressure quite well. I, uh, in previous tournaments, I've got nervous, but I found I didn't get nervous in this one, which was strange. And I'm not really sure why I, I didn't get nervous, but um, yeah, it was, really, it was a really positive experience, I think, for, for many people. And, um, yeah, I think it was it was really good and looking forward to this year. Mm. With the I guess the franchise style of cricket where people end up playing with people they perhaps have never played with before or have played against and they might might know but not as well as you do your regular teammates. We always talk in um open up cricket about how important it is to use those people around you, your teammates to support you and so on. How easy is it to get to click with a new group of people also bearing in mind that you'll be then going back off to your own settings at the end of the tournament 
yeah, I think it's a really exciting time um, for especially domestic girls being able to play with so many quality international players. Um, and yeah, I think I think everyone just really embraces it and tries to learn as much as possible off, off the overseas and um, yeah, just have a really good time with it as well. So um, yeah, I think uh, we've got some different overseas this year. So it's always good to keep me meeting new players and having them involved with our setup. Um, so yeah, I think obviously they bring a lot of experience both on and off the field. So it's good to just pick their brains and um, yeah, just try and get what you can out of them as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's really good to have those players involved. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a really useful lesson for everyone uh, of whether they're a young player, an old player or, or whatever, that those other people that are around who might have come from another country or another background, a great resource to tap into. And it sounds like for you, for you and for others, there isn't an issue about, I guess, asking for help from these people or getting their, um, getting their opinion. Yeah, I think um, you've only got these players for about six weeks. So I think it's just trying to make the most um, of them being here. Um, and the players that have, I've played with before in the past that have come over and played have, have been really good with that and really wanted to help out. And yeah, you might play against them in international cricket over the years, but um, they're really uh, giving with their with their thoughts and information and want to help out. And um, especially with these franchise competitions, obviously you're there to win and um, everyone just tries to help each other out with, with different things. So um, yeah, they bring a lot to, to the competition. Um so much of what you do is, of course, playing the game of cricket and then thinking about what you've done, preparing, and be all consuming, really. So for the sake of that balance between the game and everything else and to look after your, your health and well-being, what is it that you look to go towards to help switch off entirely from the game once you've finished um a game or a training session or even at the end of the season, bearing in mind, of course, you've just been out to Australia and I suppose haven't had that chance to switch off in the same way as usual. Yeah, it's. I think that's probably the thing I find the hardest is to, to switch off after a game. I think nowadays um, the seasons are extended and with the opportunities to go and play abroad, you don't get as much downtime. Um, but I think it's really important to that when you do get that downtime, you really make the most of it. I think... Obviously, I've been away since um, September when playing the Big Bash and then just been on the England um, tours. So Sparks have been amazing and, and given me a few weeks off and um, I've managed to get away on holiday. Um, so I feel really refreshed and, and ready to go again now. So, um, but yeah, after, after games, I think that's the biggest struggle for me. I think I remember during the 100, um, we'd obviously stay and watch the men after, after our games, but once you get back to that hotel room, you're sort of sitting there by yourself and obviously still thinking about the game and adrenaline still going. Um, so, yeah, I found I found it hard to, to switch off after the games during the 100. Um, so, obviously, your phone's pinging a bit more. Um, you're probably watching the highlights on the TV, um, <laughs> which we did as a team quite often. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it is important to just try and put your phone down, turn it off and... and um, I don't know, go and sit and chat with some mates or, or whatever after the game. Obviously, we were, we were in a bubble last year, so we, um, we were in a hotel, so you couldn't quite get away from that environment too much. Um, but, yeah, I think what we did quite well was on our days off, we did get away and play a bit of golf or go for a walk and get a coffee or um, just try and limit our cricket chat on days off, um, which I think is really important. I think, obviously... Um, the schedules are getting really busy now so between training and game times you're not getting too many free days um, so yeah I think I think it is really important especially as we progress on with the women's calendar is getting busier and busier um, yeah I think it's just trying to make the most of that downtime when you do get it. The downtime I think is probably going to be as you say with the increase of volume of, of cricket in the women's game going to be something which is going to be so precious to people and um, we've seen how many strains there have been on, on people within 
the, the the bubble environments and things like that so as they start to fade away probably still going to be yet more cricket and for someone like yourself playing in Australia and also in England in multiple competitions um, as well as have, making sure you have that downtime what else works for you to make sure that your mind's as healthy as your body is? Um, I think it's just trying to keep on top of everything that, that goes with being a sports person. I think obviously your nutrition, making sure you get enough sleep, making sure you get enough recovery sessions in and your gym sessions. Um, and I think it's just trying to look after yourself as much as possible um, to make sure you're in the best place to, to go out and play your best cricket at, because that's what you want to do at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's just finding something that you can you can do to, to really switch off, um, whether it's reading, cooking, going for a walk, playing golf, whatever it is. I think um, it is really important. I think I've I've got better at that over the years. I think I sort of had to because of um, our schedules were obviously getting a lot busier. Um, I sort of forced myself to do that a little bit more because otherwise I'd just come home and just sit and watch cricket again when I get home. Um, so yeah, I think um, yeah, it's really important just to to switch off and make sure you're recovering and getting yourself in the best possible place to to play your best cricket. Mm. I've got two more questions. They're completely unconnected, which isn't particularly helpful. But there, there we go. The first one is a, a bit more in line with what we've just been saying, and a really important thing for us here is how comfortable people feel in if they are struggling knowing that there's someone there to be able to even just initially let off a bit of steam to um how's that progressed in your time of 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 playing cricket because there's been some quite big steps forward in these last couple or three years Uh, where do you sense the game generally is with that in accepting that these things can affect anyone yeah i think um the awareness about it is a lot more um these days and i think it is important that we we are able to speak about um, if we're not feeling great. Um, and I feel the culture we've got um, at Sparks, especially that's where we play most of our cricket is is really good for that. And I think obviously everyone's got their their better friends in the team that they get on on more with. And um, I think a lot of feel of people will feel comfortable actually having those conversations now. Um, which is obviously very important um, because that's another part of you of you making sure you get fit to play really, isn't it? You've got to make sure your your mind is okay and being able to let off a bit of steam is is obviously really important every now and then. Um, and yeah, just initiating those conversations um, again is is uh, really good. So I think yeah, I think it's obviously changed a lot over the last few years. Obviously, a lot of people have come out and said they're not okay um which is obviously um important for for people that probably don't feel as comfortable that they know that they can actually come out and say that mm. uh, yeah completely agree so that's that's on one side of it in terms of mental health uh, when there might be problems in terms of like the mental skills a common question that, that i hear from players and particularly those who who are playing in women's cricket where they might have played in their clubs and 20 over cricket but then they'll be moving towards playing a a standard where it's it's a 40 over or longer competition what kind of things work for you to switch to a longer format having played a lot of shorter format like t20 and the 100 um yeah i think that it probably is the one of the challenging things now. We play a lot of shorter format cricket. Um, and I know last year we obviously had the 100. Um, and then not long after we went back into our 50 over regional competition. So it's trying to flip that switch back to, to actually um, playing for longer, um, doing skills for longer. Um, so just try to make sure that in the nets I was probably playing a bit more conservatively and um yeah just trying to i think it's more a mindset thing um rather than skill i think trying to get your head around that you you'll be batting for 40 50 overs um rather than 100 balls or 120 balls um so yeah i think it's more mindset just trying to um 
adjust to that and making sure that you I don't know just really clear on what what you're trying to do and I think that's important that you have these um thoughts before you go into training or obviously before definitely before you go into game but before you go to training thinking about um exactly what you want to get out of the session and know that you're in a, a 50 over training session uh, or a phase 50 over phase now um so yeah i think it's it's just trying to flip that switch in your head back to what well, i've got to do everything for a bit longer i've got to feel for longer i've got to bat for longer probably going to bowl more overs um so i think it's just trying to and then also building your workloads up obviously the bowlers especially um they've got to to try and gradually build their overs back up so going from bowling four overs in a game to then bowling 10 overs um can be quite a, a big ask on their body so i think it's trying to maintain that that fitness level um so you can adjust and adapt to that once you get back to that longer phase yeah brilliant thank you well eve that's been it's been great uh what i'll finish with is wishing you all the best for the English summer that's coming up. And I'm sure we're going to see you smash it again uh, when you're on the screens, particularly in the hundreds. So wishing you all well with that. And thanks for your Thank time. You. Thank you very much. And I appreciate it.